Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, best-selling author, and most importantly, proud American gun owner. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner, please do so, and feel free to share this video with others and help spread the word about the Second Amendment and this channel. Okay, great news, guys. I've been reading NYSERPA versus Bruin carefully. I have a lot of information to give to you. I'm going to give it to you in bite-sized pieces because I think that's a lot easier to digest uh, and break it down in the various ways. But I came across some incredible language that I don't think is anyone's really picked up on in the decision yet. And I'm going to tell you why it's so hugely favorable to gun owners. So basically, the, I'm going to read the language to you. But let me tell you what the essence of it says. The essence of it says is, in a, well, let me step back and just go with this way, folks. Remember, the Bruin case said that if the gun controllers want to enact a gun statute, gun control regulation, they can do it, but it's only going to be constitutional under the Second Amendment if the anti-gunners government can show that whatever that law is they enacted that restricted our right to keep and bear arms, they have to show there's some historical analogy, a historical example during the founding period, which I think runs 1760 to 1826. The anti-gunners have to show if they pass a law or regulation restricting gun rights that sometime during that window of that window of time, and again, 1760, 1826 or so, that during that time there was a historical analog that's basically a then version of what they passed today. And of course, the modern day gun controllers, none of these things, as best I could tell, really existed at the time of our founding. So they all, not all, but much of the modern day regulatory state involving guns arguably is unconstitutional under the current precedent of the Supreme Court in Heller, McDonald, Caetano, and Bruin. We'll see what the court does going forward. But here's what I want you to have learned. One of the critical things the Supreme Court said in assessing whether or not a modern day regulation um, violates the Second Amendment is, again, first of all, the government bears the burden. They have to show it. If they don't show an analogy at the time of the founding, the government loses. The gun control statute or regulation falls by the wayside, it fails, it is struck down as not enforceable. So the burden's on the government to show an example, historically, number one. Number two is it has to be in the founding era. That's the window of time that's really relevant. There's some debate about this in terms of the late 19th century, not relevant for our purposes. It's really the founding era that counts. The last thing is this, that the Supreme Court says when you assess a gun control regulation or law today, one of the questions they're going to ask going forward or ask they tell lower courts to do is to ask themselves, was the problem, the social problem, the concern, the crisis, whatever it was that exists today, did that similar problem or concern exist at the time of the founding? If it did, if it did, then the question becomes, well, what did the founders do about that? And they said, to the extent that you can show, meaning the gun advocacy groups, if you will, could show, people that support gun rights could show, that there was a similar problem at the time of our founding. But that the founding fathers did not enact gun control to address it, that is very powerful evidence today that similar gun control legislation that didn't exist at the time, trying to address a common problem that existed all the way back at the founding, that is a basis for striking down the modern day gun control. So here's the specific language from the Supreme Court I want you to understand. This is what the court wrote, Justice Thomas. When a challenged regulation, when a challenged regulation addresses a general societal problem that has persisted since the 18th century, the lack of a distinctly similar historical regulation addressing that problem is relevant evidence that the challenge regulation today is inconsistent with the Second Amendment. Thomas continued, Likewise, if earlier generations, which would include the founding era, of course, if earlier generations addressed the social problem, societal problem, but it did so through materially different means than what would be called gun control today, that could also be evidence that a modern day regulation, gun control regulation, is unconstitutional. So, and I'll put this language down below. So what this language is saying is, if people can show that the concern of a modern day gun control law existed during the founding, but was not addressed by gun control, 
but was addressed, either not addressed or addressed by some other consideration than gun control, then modern day gun control statute that addressed that potential problem is unconstitutional. Let me give you an example. We know that whenever the anti-gunners pass gun control legislation today, what do they always say? There's two general things. Mass killings. A crazy guy, a criminal goes in and engages in mass killings. So of course, it's a tragedy. Notwithstanding the fact that, of course, many of these things occur in gun-free zones, set the issue aside. Um, you know, they talk about mass killings and they talk about general crime, general gun crime, so-called gun crime. So they talk about. Well, we know that during the founding period, guess what? We know they had general gun crime or crime. Of course they had crime. Remember, Georgia was originally supposed to be a penal colony. People are going to send, you know, prisoners and criminals to Georgia the way they sent them to Australia. We know there were major prisons in places like Connecticut and the crime rates back at the founding era was very high. That's not even get into the dangers associated with, you know, various wars that were being fought and Indian raids, which Justice Kennedy pointed out in the oral argument of Heller, the dangers of Indian raids that the founding fathers understood existed at the time. So you have general crime problems. And beyond that, as I've gone about, I've talked about this in other videos, you actually had the founding fathers were well aware of mass killings. For example, um, for example, give you just a few. In 1622, the Jamestown Massacre in what is now known as Virginia, 347 men, women, and children were killed in an Indian raid. In Penn's Creek in Pennsylvania in 1755, you had 14 people massacred in a single day. John Adams repeatedly talked about how people would carry guns all the time because they feared being killed in these raids, in mass killings. In Cherry Valley Massacre, there's something called the Cherry Valley Massacre in 1778. You had Iroquois Indians and Tories basically murdered like 45 people, some of whom were combatants and some of whom were non-combatants in the Revolutionary War. So the point is, and I have a whole video on a bunch of other examples of mass killings that occurred before the Second Amendment was adopted. So what did, the, what did our founding fathers do? Right, the Founding Fathers knew all about these massacres. They were well-versed in history. They knew what was going on. So what did the Founding Fathers do with all these mass killings? Did they enact gun control? Did they enact sensitive places regulation? Did they require background checks to get a tomahawk? No, none of the above. During the Founding, they actually adopted the Second Amendment. So the solution to mass killings and the solution to general crime and the solution to threats from animals and others was, guess what? Guns, more guns, the Second Amendment. It preserved the right to keep and bear arms. So the bottom line is, as the Supreme Court said in the Bruin case, and I gave you that language and I'll put it down below, because the same social problems that confronted the founders, mass killings, animal attacks, raids, and general crime, these were social problems that existed in the 18th century, just like they do today. Founding fathers did not adopt gun control. Instead, they embrace guns in the Second Amendment. So based on the language of the Bruin decision itself, the majority opinion by Justice Thomas for the majority of the court, for six justices said, that's compelling evidence that a modern day gun control that tries to address those issues that existed in the 18th century, but they can't find a historical analog, and the problem was the same, except they're trying to use gun control today. When they didn't use gun control in the 18th century, the modern day gun control should fail and be violated of of the Second Amendment and should be struck down as violating your constitutional rights here in the United States. Okay, well, I hope you learned something here today at the Four Boxes Diner. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And again, we'll see you soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.